So I'm going to present this talk along with Aoife, who you heard from earlier. Aoife is one of the senior physiotherapists in the Bond Square Hospital. My name is Dr. Neil Lynch. If you haven't figured that out already, then maybe you're concussed. Um, so I want to tell you a little bit about what's happened in the year since, since our last concussion symposium. That You all have, all have that on your desk, so you have my number now. Uh, this is us all a year ago, looking a year younger. Actually, Anthony, I noticed you've grown a beard, which you didn't seem to have in the last photograph. Um, but, you know, that was a year ago, and uh, I was full of hopes and aspirations for the future. And at the end of my talk a year ago, I gave a list of my aspirations, basically. So, awareness of concussion in children, check. You know, that's growing all the time. Baseline testing of all children, watch this space. There's some exciting announcements in the pipeline. Early diagnosis equals early recovery. I'll tell you about that in my data. And uh, developing a dedicated concussion service for children. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. So um, here I am looking kind of knackered. I, I, I was jet lagged. <laughs> I'm over in Pittsburgh in this photograph. Aoife's not in the photo because she took the photo. And Anthony's holding uh, the little puppy that I told my girls I'd bring with me and take photographs of him in various uh, places in Pittsburgh so they could see what the puppy was doing. Um, so I'll tell you about the pediatric concussion clinic and then Aoife will tell you a little bit more about uh, the adults that we see as well. Um, my clinic runs every Tuesday, uh, it's not my clinic, it's our clinic. It's a consultation with me which is about 30 or 40 minutes, followed by a very comprehensive workup with the physiotherapy team. I get referrals from GPs and increasingly I'm getting referrals from other consultants as well now. It's countrywide, people are, will travel very far and are happy to do so to get treatment. Um, we, on the blurb you'll see it says children aged uh, 10 to 15, but I do see younger children in my rooms uh, and then we link them in with the physiotherapy service as well. Uh, it is not an acute service, so if you bang your head, you go to your GP, your local hospital, whatever, you don't rock up to my clinic on a Tuesday morning, that's not the way it works. Uh, we try to see people within 10 days of referral. Uh, Mickey and Anne have been through this fairly extensively in terms of different types of concussion. And I'm just going to break down the numbers in terms of the children that we've seen and the types of concussion that they've had. 25 confirmed cases, that look like, looks like a small number, but uh, they come back several times. So it's, it's a busy clinic and it's getting busier. Uh, 16 males and 9 females. Three years and 10 months, you're saying, what the hell is she doing seeing a three-year and 10-month-old? That child was referred to me by uh, their GP. He'd fallen out of his bunk bed and uh, had been to the local hospital and just wasn't getting better. And I saw him on the ward and he literally, he was completely cross-eyed. So he had ocular symptoms and Aoife did some work with him and he recovered. Um, so breaking down the numbers, vestibular and ocular are the most common. Migraine uh, gets a look in as well. Cervical is quite rare. Uh, four of the 25 had, had associated anxiety and two had associated cognitive symptoms. Both of those were male. Uh, we'll probably diagnose that a lot more once we roll out the impact testing because we'll be able to do formal neurocognitive testing on them. So that's just a demographic, mostly males. Uh, and in those males, uh, mostly ocular and vestibular coming in a close second. Uh, in the females, it's vestibular and ocular again. Migraine is getting a slightly bigger slice of the pie, but these are pretty small numbers. So how long did it take for them to actually find their way to Cork? About 17 weeks is the answer. The quickest was two days, very on the ball GP, diagnosed the child, had them investigated and uh, saw them on the Sunday and I saw them on the Tuesday. Uh, the maximum time was two years, which is kind of sad to think that there was a, a child out there with symptoms for two years. Uh, so 19 of the 25 have completed their treatment, have undergone their return to play uh, clearance and are, are back enjoying a full happy life. Uh, six of the 25 are recent and are ongoing with their treatment. I think it's very rare to have a medical uh, intervention or a therapy that you can stand up and say uh, everybody's getting better. Um, it, uh, that's nice to be able to say. It is small numbers, we're getting bigger, we'll have better data for you the next time we meet. So it takes on average about 10 weeks from start of treatment to actually be back to play. The most somebody took was seven months, that was a bit of an outlier, and the minimum was 15 days. So when you're dealing with small groups, it's obviously hard to apply statistical analysis, but we can talk about trends. So uh, females on average recover within about nine weeks and males within about 11 weeks. There is definitely a trend for the girls to present earlier. 
there is some data to present uh, to back that up that girls are either more aware or more honest or whatever more susceptible I don't know but they definitely seem to be coming in earlier uh, there's also a trend that says that the sooner you come to our clinic the better the quicker you'll get better so the patient who recovered in 15 days was the one who presented at two days and the one who took seven months to get better had been unwell for 18 months. And the other, other, other trend that we're seeing then is that if you present within about uh, 12 weeks, it takes you about nine weeks to get better. And if you take more than 12 weeks to find your way to us, uh, it takes about 13 weeks to get better. But there's a very wide range of presentation times and we do need longer follow-up of larger numbers. So if you're an optimist, you say that even if you wait months and months and months for treatment, you'll still actually get better. Um, if you're a pessimist, you'll say, well, you know, if you wait to get treatment, it'll take you four weeks longer to recover. I don't know. I, I'm probably an optimist, but, um, you know, it's, it's been great to see all these children um, getting so much better. So it's good news. Um, that's my demographic again. Every 19 of the children are better, and six of them are, are ongoing. Um, so what's the future now? Uh, so we're opening a paediatric medical assessment unit in the Bon Secours Hospital in Cork uh, next month and we will be seeing minor head injuries so I will have pretty much immediate access and knowledge of the concussions that come in so it'll be nice to have that little cohort of patients. Uh, we're hoping to roll out impact baseline testing like I said watch the space. We are actively building a concussion network there are a lot of moving parts but it's, it's fantastic and there's just so much enthusiasm and support for it. Uh, it's all about teamwork uh, the physiotherapy department and particularly IFA have been instrumental in, uh, in allowing this vision and this idea of a concussion clinic to actually uh, become a reality. So I'll hand you over to IFA now because she's done all the heavy lifting. I'm sorry, now I have the last talk and it's all data. Sorry. So I know it said in the talk an overview of concussion care in Ireland, but actually we're just looking at our clinic because initially we were the only paediatric concussion clinic in Ireland. I'm not a peds physio, I'll put my in the start. I'm actually an orthopedic and MSK physio that did a sports medicine master's, took an interest in concussion and ended up in a paediatric clinic. <laughs> um, now I would work closely with paediatric physios. Um, I have actually a first cousin who's a clinical specialist in paediatrics, which does help and works in a neuro del del uh, I can't I can't talk a neuro area. I'll just say that. <laughs> um, so we can actually have ideas and we do have resources if it is a very complex case. So it's a paediatric concussion clinic. It started last year in 2016. It was all Neve's vision. She saw a big gaping opening in the market, as you might think, being a private hospital. But actually she saw a concerned area for a parent because she has two little girls who've had had concussion. Um, and she just saw there was nowhere to go. So she saw an area that definitely parents were crying out for and she set it up. Um, but now I do take referrals from Neve primarily. We have two neuro consultants who are adult consultants who will refer to me. Um, I'll take referrals. We take referrals from GPs. I will take referrals from um, physios because often you will be treating someone who has a cervical problem, but then you notice they have a concussion problem as well, and you might know where to go with them. But they have to have a GP letter to come with us, all right. Um, and then also I'll take them from team doctors as well, no problem. So this is our paediatric concussion clinic. Um, for the Americans, Cork is situated in the south of the country. They think they're a bit of a rebel county, but I'm from Kerry, and I think we're the kingdom still. I always put that in. Neve, I wind Neve up about it a small bit. So population of Cork is 417,000. City is over around 112,000. Roughly, they say, the rate of concussion is 1.2 per population. That would work out as 4,000 concussions should be in Cork City, which is roughly 80 per week. We don't have 80 per week coming to us because the majority of patients will recover themselves, and we'll just talk about that in a second. 55% um, are male, 55, 50.5% are females, and 49.5% are males in Cork. It's a very proud of its sporting tradition. They have a brand new Porky Cueve, which opened up this year. 
Um, very proud of Cork City. I think they only need two more points and they have won the league. Um, also with Munster Rugby would have a huge roots in Cork. And also in terms of racing, um, they only have one track, which is Mallow Race Track, but it would be the home of Point to Points. It's the home of Steeplechase. And it actually would be the number, biggest area of eventing and in terms of hunting would actually be Cork. So there is a huge sporting population out there. So as I said, the clinic demographics is Neve is our primarily our referral um, because she set up the um, set it up so she refers to us. There is presently three physios and we have quite a range. So in terms of Pittsburgh, they have individual areas and individual people. And what we did in our clinic is um, we picked physios with the range who had an interest in concussion. So I'm an orthopedic physio with a sports medicine background and do MSK. Um, we have a vestibular physio, and then we have a, another MSK physio with 20 years experience. So between the three of us, we have really good knowledge. We now have two neuro physios joining our team as well, um, which will actually just build our services even more. In 11 months, I've seen 36 patients. Now, the reason I'm different to Neve is because I take adults as well. Um, in terms of 36, often they'd be seen two to three times. Um, so you can see how our numbers are built quite big. big. So we went to Pittsburgh, we have a great relationship with them in Pittsburgh, it's a very sporting city from the Pittsburgh Penguins for ice hockey, to the Steelers for their football, to the Pirates for their baseball. It's actually a really lovely city and I'd recommend anyone to visit it. <laughs> um, really, really fantastic sporting facilities over there. So as I said, the good news is the majority of patients can recover on their own, okay? And that's why maybe you mightn't see anyone. If you look at the research, they show 40% can get better within one week, 60% get better in two weeks, 80% get better in three weeks. But really, we see the ones who are longer, the ones who aren't getting better, who need a bit of a treatment. Now, as Neve said in her talk, Yes, if they do come to us sooner, we can actually increase their recovery time and they can get better quicker. But the good news is 80% of patients can get better. The research shows it takes 10 to 14 days for adults to recover, where for children it can take up to four weeks. I'm going to defend the statement, sorry, now a bit controversial. There is one line that is good in the fifth, uh, the new consensus statement. It said, persistent sy symptoms beyond the time frame warrants further assessment and treatment if required. So maybe, Mickey, you can put that in your talk in future, Anne. So there is one line that says actually active treatment is good for these patients, and that's in the consensus statement that was released there in October. So our demographics, males versus females. So I've seen 42% females, 58% males. Females do have, and I have shown the research, an increased risk of concussion compared to their male counterparts. This is maybe due to biomechanical issues, i.e. decreased neck ratio, decreased strength. Neck strength has been shown to be a protective, I won't say a protective maximum in concussion, but neck, increased neck strength can actually help with concussion. It's an interesting finding they found. Head to ball ratio, hormonal factors and cerebral um, perfusion. In terms of going back to Anthony's talk, where they showed um, differences in terms of the menstruation, it actually shows as well what time of the month the female um, player gets hit can actually affect the white concussion pattern than they have as well. Um, but it's more likely that you see males in your clinic, and this is due to, and all your physios out there will know this, more males take part in sport, so they have more exposure to it, so that's why you might see a higher percentage of males in your clinic, but actually females have a greater risk of actually developing concussion than males. And it's the same is said for an ACL as well. Age range was from 6 to 76 to a 67-year-old. She was our one outlier. Um, average age of patients was 17 years, plus or minus 11 years. If we took out the 67-year-old, it actually brought our average age down to 16. And in a paper in 2015, they stated that 70% of all concussions were reported between the ages of 10 and 19. And that's why I suppose Neve saw the gap and saw there needed to be a service to um, treat these patients. So you can look there at our age ranges. Um, again, we can go 31% for the 16 to 21 years, 22% for the 12 to 15 years, 3% uh, for 41 plus. And again, just all variety of ages. Our referral pattern, and this will change this year, I said we had 36 patients. In the last week, I got six 
referrals um, for patients. So our numbers are growing and growing very quickly. Neve has referred 26 patients to us. Um, from our neurologist, we have two. From GP, I've had four. From a team doctor, this is a very proactive team doctor. Uh, where's Brendan? It's Mort. Who we did our masters with. Um, Mort works with a team. He's also actually involved in the A and E in another hospital, in a HSE hospital. If Mort has diagnosed someone with a concussion, he actually sends them to me before I and I have to clear them before they're allowed back on the pitch again. So he's a very proactive doctor. Now that has only started in the last six weeks, to eight weeks, but he's involved in three teams and going forward, he wants all his players to be reviewed before they can go back. And then one physio was uh, two physios patients have been referred to us. They were patients who were being treated for a neck problem, and the physio noticed that they actually had concussion as well. Number of treatments, it varies from one visit, and you think, what do you do in one visit? You give them advice. Often this time, the patients have maybe recovered, and you are just give them good concussion advice, telling them about sleep hygiene, diet, exercise, what to do if they get a further concussion, and they have passed their exertion test. The average number of visits, though, is two. We have had some patients who have been seven-plus visits, and... As Neve said, that was a person who had concussion for up to two years, so it took longer to treat. And we have, of course, like everything, every clinic, we have a DNA rate as well. Most commonly reported symptoms are headache, difficulty concentrating, fatigue, drowsiness, dizziness, fogginess, feeling slowed down, light sensitivity, balance problems, and difficulty with memory. And what UPMC then is, they have created the six phenotypes um, in terms of concussion, and when I looked at our stats and broke them down, we found that 29% of our patients had migraine, 30% had vestibular, 25% had ocular. And if you look at the research, actually vestibular and ocular are the two symptoms that are often reported. Um, cervical is 11%, anxiety is 3%, and cognitive and fatigue only had 2%. So as I said, vestibular and ocular symptoms have been shown to account for 60% of our symptoms. And if you look at ours, they actually add up to 55. So we're not bad off it, even though we have very small numbers. Um, this can manifest as dizziness, vertigo, visual disturbances, nausea, and difficulty in a busy environment. And the big thing, and we'll always say this, and has come up in a few questions in the panel, what is the big sign that they have concussion? If they've on-field dizziness or amnesia, take them off the pitch straight away. Okay, they might pass the Maddox scale, um, but if, they've on, if they're reporting on-field dizziness, it's a really poor sign, and it's, really poor, it's a predictor of that there'll be a longer time in returning, recovering from that concussion. Mechanism of injury. I have a lot of GA and rugby and soccer ones. I've had unusual ones. I've had bottle flip. I had to ask the child what that was. And it's a game they play in primary school where you have a bottle and you have to flip it over and whoever can get it standing up wins the prize. And she got hit in the head with the bottle. Um, I've had an assault. I've had a car accident. And actually, I have two more car accidents next week. The interesting thing is, and they show in the research, if you work in orthopedics and you have the neck of femur fractures, and they often report there's a lot of confusion after the words in the elderly, and they say, oh, they're frail, they're a bit confused, it's down to medication. Think of the mechanism of fall, the trauma he did to break the hip. They might have hit their head as well, and they might have a concussion ongoing as well. And it's something to think, even as inpatients, if you're treating the elderly, it isn't just predisposed to young patients' concussion. It can affect every age, and it's something to think about in terms of our practice as well. Um, as you can see, rugby is our, we've had eight cases referred from rugby. Now, I'm not saying it's all rugby, and rugby are the worst cases. We have two very private schools and very rugby oriented schools in Cork. The awareness is very good there in terms of um, concussion and concussion treatment, and I think that might be our bias a small bit, rather than there was a lot of rugby injuries. In the FSME, um, which is the Faculty of Sports and Exercise Medicine, and um, autumn meeting a month ago, they showed that GA injuries and concussion occurs in one in five um, GA players, but over 83% of them will play on still, regardless of a concussion. So I think awareness isn't great with club players, and especially small clubs. I'm from a small club. You might have only 15 in your panel. You have no subs. You're not going to come off. You know, So it's a big thing to think about with GA players. But it is getting out there, and the word is getting out there, but it's just feeding it down a small bit. So further audits, what are we going to look at? Time referred to clinic and examination, and Neva started that already. 
Concussion during a game, training, and time of season, an injury occurred. I know last year at the physio conference, there was a physio who presented a paper looking at mechanism of all injuries during rugby, and was it during pre-season, or was it during um, what time of the season it happened? I'd like to see a concussion. Is it as there's a tired effect are they coming on as the season goes on, and looking at when the injury occurs. Again, fields, uh, females versus males and reported symptoms. Neve has started that a small bit, and they have always said, and all the research does say, females report it because they're better at reporting and they're more honest. So it's interesting to see going forward, is it involved in sport as well? And especially looking at your inter-county players, how many female inter-county players will report concussion if they do get a concussion? Disadvantages, we're not an ideal clinic. We do have problems. We're a private clinic, first of all, okay? And I know some talk about HSE and the A&E. It is very hard for them to get all the knowledge. Uh, it's getting resources out there. Neve held a public meeting last year for 250, 300 people, free event, just to identify them, to give them the tools. And I suppose going forward, that is the way to go. It's great to give the advice to all us professionals who want to learn, but it's getting the message out to parents, out to schools, out to um, just the first aiders even. The Red Cross people is important. We don't have an A&E, but we do have an MAU opening up in the next 16th of October, I think it is, Neve, for our paediatrics. Um, public awareness, and this will always be a problem. Public awareness, the more you, all it is is just keep telling, 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 and eventually the message will finally sink in. One of our physios was at a under-12 camogie game last week, and one of the girls got hit, started vomiting on the pitch, and the coach said, Asher, she's fine, keep her on. Yeah, until the physio ran on and actually pulled the player off the pitch. <laughs> yeah, so it is getting it out there a small bit. And underreporting of concussion is a huge thing, as I said. Um, in that big paper that was brought, um, it was a small study, study that was done in the FSME, where they said that 83% of GA players will play on compared to, now it wasn't a great one, but 75% of the rugby players. In terms of GPs as well, GPs might only see one concussion a year in their practice, and it is unfortunate to put all the burden on GPs as well. They're firefighting a lot of times, but it's just giving them tools as much as possible. We're always at the end of the phone as well. You can email us, and I have my details up, that if you're unsure, give us a drop us a line, and we can help with you as well if you're unsure. I did find that this is very interesting. Working with teams, I'll see loads of ankles, I'll see loads of hamstrings, but you never get to seeing a sprained brain. And we've got to think of concussion like a sprained brain. It can be treated. It's very easily treated, as Mickey and, and Anthony has shown. They have very good recovery. And it's just getting that mindset out that it is a sprain like anything else, and we can actually work and treat with it. This sign I thought was very funny. In Pittsburgh, they even watch their spectators. They have a sign up about the pucks that if anyone gets hit with one, to make notify it and seek medical attention. We're very much a long way away from that. We need to start working with our players first, with our kids in the schoolyard. But it's something that I hope that eventually we would look at treating everyone the same. And as I said, there are our details. If you're unsure of anything, you can always give us a drop us a line or give us a phone call. And we do take direct referrals. All right. <laughs>